All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'm Brian Kruzniak with ITS, and uh, we're starting off the new year with this idea of a lunch and learn. And the thought was that lots of people were going to get iPad devices that didn't already have them um, over the holidays and not necessarily know all of the bells and whistles that you can add on to them and things that you can do with them. So the idea is not to have a presentation, but to have a discussion and really just talk about what apps you use, how you use your iPad, what questions you have, throw it out to the group. It's really just to try and bring the best ideas to the surface so that we can all learn something um, by having the discussion. So no real set agenda other than the questions that we had um, asked people to kind of put together before, um, uh, before the session. So we tried to have something that we could uh, think through a little bit beforehand um, just to know where people are at. Um, with so many people here, I don't really want to take whatever it be, 10, 15 minutes to just go around the room. I don't think we need to do that. But as you talk or as you have a question or whatnot, say your name and what your role is, and then I'm also going to pass this sheet around to do the same thing. So just sign in and give us an idea. Um, as you guys may know, I see a lot of students here, and I see Michael here. Um, there's a, a lot of interest in having an iPad uh, pilot with students that would be actually using the iPads within the curriculum. And so as we get more experience with using these iPads, as we get more experience with what types of applications fit into a medical curriculum, um, that's also on the table. So I just want to throw that out there for everyone too. Um, so with that, I think we'll head into the first, um, the first most popular question. And I can remember how to do this. Um, here's the list of the questions. There were 15 questions that actually came in. I'm not sure how many, how many people voted or how many people saw this thing. So a few. Um, these are the results. So the way that this works is when these questions get out, go out, they go out to anybody, you can look at the question and then say, yeah, that's a good question. I have that same thing and kind of vote yes or vote, no, nah, I don't really care about that. And so it's really a good way to bring a bunch of information together and then try and prioritize it. So that was the goal of this. So we'll start with this, maybe go through four or five questions with this, and then kind of open it up for discussion if there aren't any other questions on here that make people uh, too excited. So I've got them in order of um, highest to lowest rank. So if we go back over here, the first question um, was actually from one of our own IT guys. And he was asking, is there an app which allows me to input notes while viewing educational video content on the same iPad? And so currently, he, what he wants to do is watch a video and take notes at the same time. I don't know of anything like that. Anybody else? No? So I think the follow-up question then to this is, what do people use for taking notes? Yeah, just throw up your hand, I guess. Notability it was a, a note-taking app that uh -huh. recently Gene? came out. has handwriting recognition and um, in, input a PDF, handwrite with it, use a stylus. It's uh, one of the better stylus note-taking apps that I've used. Anybody else? Notability. Yeah. Notability like this? Mm -hmm. We'll try to put notes together so that everyone can get them. I'll say that's like two or two ninety nine on the iPad store. Is it now? Yeah, I think it was ninety nine. We bought it. Like PowerPoint files and PDFs, Word documents. I don't think you can do just. I don't know. Notes. Notes. Yeah, it's only PDFs. PowerPoints won't download into the program, but you can save the PowerPoint as a PDF and then use it that way. Any other ones? I use I annotate PDF. I don't remember. I bought it like in the spring, so I have no idea how it's much. Ten dollars. Yeah, it was kind of expensive, but it it had a lot of nice features to it. And the same thing is just PDFs. Um, PDFs. It will import and then convert. Um, uh, PowerPoints, but basically I have to put it into a PDF format first. 
I use good reader. Anyone see how much it is? Uh, it's $3. Good reader, same kind of idea as mostly PDFs. Yeah, it's PDFs. <coughs> Is there anything like an Adobe Acrobat or <coughs> iPad? There is actual Adobe Acrobat, but all of these will use, will let you view PDFs, but then you can also. And not, annotate. The, not the Adobe like reader, reader, Adobe what? Acrobat. No, whatever. It's Adobe Acrobat Reader, I think, is what you're thinking of. What is the Adobe Adobe Premiere or whatever? The one that, that you like delete pages. So you want to do something to create a PDF or modify a PDF? Yeah. What do we have? Adobe, what is it? Adobe Professional. Professional, yeah. Mm -hmm. Adobe. And there's not an app for that. There's not an app. And a minor uh, player in this. Do you want any information on DroidPad? That's what I, use. I, I think what we'll do is we'll do another session on just okay. the droids. Okay. Um, is there a lot of apps on droids that will do this? That's true. That's true. Okay. Uh, there's there's another called Notarize, uh, and it it will let you import. Uh, it's kind of neat because it has a web browser inside of it, and you can use the web browser to go to pages and download. PDFs or PowerPoints, which will import. Uh, only problems I found with it is it doesn't play nice with ATSU's Blackboard system, uh, so you can't get on there and directly download your PowerPoints. Uh, and also, uh, some professors have giant 140-page slide PowerPoints, and it, it doesn't do well uh, importing that many slides. Anything else for notes? Mm -hmm. Good note. Reader. That does basically, I might read what all those do. They all, they all are pretty similar. Yeah. Um, another one that I use because I found out I still need to write out my notes like on a dry erase board and stuff is Cam Scanner Plus. And what it will do is it will take a picture and then I can also convert it to um, as optical character recognition and it can export it as a PDF and stuff. So I can also take pictures out of like my textbook and then I have flashcards on my iPad or my phone. So that's... So you take a picture with So I'll iPad. take a picture either with my iPad or my iPhone and with iCloud it automatically will sync it and then you know if I'm sitting waiting somewhere and I don't have my notes I can just open my phone up and there's stuff I can study. Yeah. And I, I, assume, I, I didn't know I'm kind of ignorant on these things, but does everyone know that you can hold down the center button and click the power button and it'll grab a screenshot of whatever you're looking at and throw it in the camera area? I mean, that's a really nice feature if you're going to make annotations and whatnot. So it'll create a JPEG of whatever's on the screen at the, at the time and then you can edit it. Someone else? Um, how long is lying? Is there any good note taking one that you can add pages to? So there's some that allow you to do it but they're less than optimal. Like GoodNote allows you to add pages to your PDFs. So you can like write notes and stuff with a good one. I think it's notability, but I'm not real sure. Does anyone have a separate page that you can so write good, notes and type on? GoodNote will allow you to allow, add pages to your PDF as documents. Kevin Sager is the first year that uses it actively if you want to know more, for more information. And also import images that you can paste into your notes. Say you want to post a vendor's image and write on it. Um, hey Josie, just jump in if you think of anything else. There's another one called Penultimate. Anyone familiar with that? Penultimate, um, shoot I didn't bring my stylus, but um, basically it gives you a blank piece of paper and then you can draw on it with a stylus and add pages. So that's the same idea. Hey, Jean. Let's go grab some. There's one right there.
I guess kind of related to note taking, I just got a flashcard app that I really like. It's just called Flashcards. It was like three bucks. And um, the great thing about it is you can take pictures from your iCloud and put it onto the flashcards. So like we're working on EKGs right now. And I've got a flashcard for every different EKG tracing. And you can use a stylus or type it out. And then when you're actually going through the flashcards, it keeps track of the ones you get right and wrong and puts them out into categories, easy, medium, hard, based off your performance. And then you can study later, depending on how much time you have. Can I say it? Does it keep an algorithm then of like which ones you are, are hard for you and it brings those yes. up more frequently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, there's another one that's similar to that called, I think it's Anki, A-N-K-I, or Anki card, something like that. And that one has lots of different versions, so it'll sync up um, with your desktop. If sometimes you study on your desktop, sometimes you study on your iPad. Is Anki the one you use to, with the triangle and the Yep. Yep. All right, good. Anything else for notes? Questions? Yeah, Josie. To kind of double back to your question about Intr being able Introduce to, yourself. I'm Josie with Apple. I cover um, I'm a higher education rep for the state of Missouri. So I'm your go to guy, I guess, if you guys need anything technical. Uh, it's great to see such a turnout. I'm actually very impressed by how many people are here. Um, to kind of double back to the question that was originally asked about whether or not you could watch video content and then take notes on at the same, at the same time, I guess it kind of depends on what you're trying to do and which video, what video content you're going to be looking at. Um, there are applications like Inkling, which are new generation textbook readers or textbook applications, and you have the ability to create dynamic content uh, inside of that application and publish it out to students. And then there's a uh, the ability to put notes into the text that you're reading. So let's say you have an anatomy book, and it's for anatomy 101 class. Everybody could have that textbook. You could enter in notes, and then that would be sunk out to the rest of the students that are participating in that particular uh, class. And so it's like a collaborative learning environment that you could do. Uh, it has the ability to play videos, audio, anything. So, I mean, if there's a way that you can do it, it just depends on how you want to get there to do it. Brian, is that still giving out on you? Do you need me to go downstairs and get a better one? Um, I think it's all right. I mean, as long as someone's taking notes and we're kind of capturing it, we'll be okay. Do I see a hand? I'd like a technical question. I'm really dumb when it comes to you know, this kind of stuff. But uh, I know there are two different types of like scrolling technology. So you you guys are talking about a stylus, and then you know you still use your finger. I know some phones that uh, some new newer phones don't take a stylus. How is the uh, how does the technology how does the technology work on iPads? Is, is it by the heat? Is it heat sensors or either, or like how does it recognize a touch? No, it knows your finger. <laughs> so, so for both fingers and the stylus work work on it, right? I don't have an iPad. Yet. So you can use a stylus if you like, or it senses your finger. That's why. So it, it does the heat sensing, right? So it's, you know, it'll, like choose that narrowest point where the, there's maximum heat, right? Is that correct? Right. Okay, but it will still take the stylus because I know, like on the on, the, on my wife's newer phone, the stylus doesn't work. You know, it's just you need uh, a special stylus. Yeah, he's a capacitive. Like, if you look at my stylus here, it's got this little rubber tip uh -huh. on it. You have to use this kind of stylus okay. if you, versus if you use one with just a hard plastic uh -huh. tip. Those won't, those won't work. Those okay. won't work. Cool. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's go to the next question. Oh, I think the next one is what's your favorite app? <laughs> it is. What's your favorite iPad app? Um, I want to jump in stuff that we haven't talked about yet. Can I extend the question to what's your favorite calendar calendaring app? Like, do you keep track of all of your appointments and your schedule? Okay, so keep going a little bit further. So on the iPad itself, there's a calendar, right? And that calendar is part of the device. But what ideally I think most people want is to somehow sync that with in our case an ATSU calendar, correct? Or maybe a personal calendar or a variety of calendars. So what are people using for calendars? Within the calendar app, um, I mean, I 
as a student, we get sent the link to uh, the Google Calendar for all the courses and things like that. As far as that, it's as simple as clicking the link and it asks you if you want to subscribe and then it automatically loads and updates the calendar every day into your calendar app. So it does everything for you. Right, so that would be using what app on the iPad? The, the calendar. I can native. Said I so, native calendar. So as long as you're using the native calendar on the iPad and you have it synced with your calendars in Gmail or in Google Apps, then it will automatically update those. Yeah, and syncing it or adding it in is as simple as clicking the link that's sent out. Right. And you can have more than one because I've got mine, my husband's, and my work one and his personal ones. We've got four different ones on here at the same time. Yeah, if you're wanting to sync with like your um, home Outlook calendar like that you're using privately, um, you can go into the iCloud and the control panel and just turn on calendars and it will automatically sync it to your iPod wirelessly. Can you explain iCloud? What is that? Yeah, um, it's basically this internet space where um, you're storing data and it will sync between your iPad, iPhone, and your computer all at once. Um, if you have iTunes updated, then you just go into the control panel and there's a spot for the iCloud and you click on that and say what exactly you want synced to your devices. So like on mine for my flashcard thing, um, I've got a file in my photos where I can just drop pictures and then it will automatically go onto my iPad. And that's using the iCloud. So if you manipulate a calendar on any one of those devices, it'll look the same on all of them? Yes. If you have a link to iCloud? Mm -hmm. Okay. So cloud is, is kind of a broad term for being able to store your data <coughs> off of your local device. So if you use a phone, a tablet computer, a couple laptops, and a home PC, the idea is rather than keeping all of those on the individual device, you can get them to all sync within the web or the cloud. So in the, the Apple world, it's iCloud. And it will automatically sync content that you have on your iPhone, with your iPad, with your Apple desktop if you have one, anything that's associated with your iCloud account. The same thing exists in the Google world with Google Docs. You can create docs up in, in Google Docs and get to them from any device on any calendar. Um, there are also tools like Dropbox, or um, what are some of the other ones on now? There's a cloud in for like Windows phones too. Skydrive. Right, Wind uh, Microsoft, what is it, Microsoft Skydrive. Live or whatever. SkyDrive now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so same thing there. Um, and then there are tools like Dropbox where you can just basically drag and drop files and automatically sync them up between your different When you say account, what does it cost? Um, it's free, it's free. a certain amount of storage. How much is it? Like five gig, isn't it? Five, 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 five gig free. <laughs> That's in, in iCloud, in the Apple world. In the Google world, I think it's eight gig. Dropbox is two, number five. It can, you can help it to $100 for like 100 gigabytes of data a year. Josie, tell me if I'm wrong, but there are certain things within iCloud that don't count towards your five gigs, like photos, certain documents from certain apps, um, calendars, things like that, that don't count towards that five gigs. Sure. I don't remember the yeah. exact what exactly it is. But like applications, for example, back up in the cloud and count as part of your storage allotment that you have. The unique thing about iCloud, too, is that unlike Google, where your information is kept at a third party location, the way the iCloud works is that it disseminates the information to each device. And so if I update something on my iPad, it's just not floating around in the cloud and I have to go get it through an internet connection, the cloud takes it from my iPad and puts it on, my, on all my other devices automatically for me. And so no matter where you're at, regardless of your internet connection, as long as you set the cloud to give you that information and sync that information, it's going to sync that to all your devices. It's something that's unique to cloud versus some of the other options. So, so that, that's a good point. Um, there's a different mentality between Apple and let's just take Apple and Google since they're the two big players. Apple wants you, so wants you. Apple um, allows allows you to keep all of your data on the local device. So you need, if you have a lot of data, you need a bigger hard drive. 
right, in order to keep all of that data around. In the Google world, you don't keep any of that information on your local device, but you have to be connected to the internet. So in order to get to that data, you have to have an internet connection to get back there. So it's a little different mentality. They're, they're definitely coming closer together, but they're starting out from different approaches. But we work great with Google. I mean, don't think that that's not the case. Right. Uh, I, I used to do medical device sales, and my team and I, we all had iPad, and we all had iPhones, and we all used Google Calendar to keep on everybody, or keep everybody's schedule up to date. And so nobody was like missing appointments or not being at a case that we're supposed to be. And they, they work seamlessly, and it all pushes in the background, just like cloud works. So you can use Google services or whatever you like. I mean, there are third parties that aren't, you're not just tied to cloud with an iPad or an Apple product. And I think on the iCloud, you can actually go to a PC and log into iCloud yes. on the web, and all that stuff's just there just like it is with Google. So, with, right. you know, so it's not only just... That's like right, so it's really not fair to think that... Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's devices, like it's like Google Plus, it distributes everything everywhere, so... That's right. What's the question? Is the, is the iPad able to do the if you have one that does not have like the 3G internet, wireless internet all the time, it's going to just sync everything to that regardless of, I mean, if you have a release? It's going to sync. Once you hit the internet, your device will start to okay, so repopulate the yeah. wireless area anyway. Okay. So did we answer the original question about calendars? Um, I wanted to ask the girl in the front, how did you get the multiple calendars in on iCalendar? <laughs> um, I let my husband do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's up in the upper it, left. I, it, I see calendars, and so I see all of them there, and like right now he has mine turned off because he doesn't need notifications. But um, in our original um, Gmail, I've gone in and given him rights to my ca all of my personal calendars, my work calendar um, that I've set up for myself, and then he's done the same with his school calendar and his personal calendar. And so then I that way on my just right my regular Gmail I can yeah. And so I think there is where we have all of the different accounts added, and then just up in the corner it just says calendars, and I can see all four of them. And, and if you don't want to sync the emails that go along with them, you can opt to either sync calendar, email, notes, I think is one of the options as well. And so you can you can pick from each account which thing you actually want to sync to your device. Okay. I think though actually adding the calendars in would be something you would do in your Google calendar, right? Mm -hmm. And then think, then yeah. once you have your Google account, then you put that into your Apple and it just pulls everything from that's in your Google calendar. So if your Google calendar has all these calendars, it just automatically puts them in there. Because it's the, the same with my phone, I've got all four of them on my phone right. too, but so I set them all up with my on my actual just Gmail account. Yeah. Sorry, just one more question on that. So I shared my work calendar with my coworkers, and I don't necessarily want them seeing my private appointments and things for weekends. How do I not give them access to that? You would need two calendars. You need a private mm -hmm. calendar, and you need a public calendar. Okay. And you just go into Google or whatever calendar service you're going to use, and just set up multiple calendars. And then you delegate people's ability to see that calendar uh, to your choosing. It can be open or closed, it doesn't matter. And when you're looking at your one calendar, mm -hmm. it, you, know, you can assign colors. Yep. So you know like the green is your, your work calendar, the red is the one that only you can see. So that way you know if you accidentally maybe uploaded it to the wrong calendar as well, so you, if you color code it. So that's kind of a checker for your private information. And some of the settings also in there will say, you know, like, if, if you were one of my coworkers and I said, well, I'm just curious what her schedule is for today, I could pull it up and if you have it set up certain ways, I can see that you're just busy. I can't see what you're on, but you're busy on something versus if you gave me rights and I can see you're at this meeting in this room at such and such time. So you can change it to for each person and have it where they can just see that you're busy versus what you're actually doing. You can actually change the setting and set it private even so when you set it to private I think even if you share the calendar it's not going to show what's on the appointment you just put like settings update for your appointment in, in Google mm -hmm. and depending on the rights you give to other people yeah you're right it'll just either show as busy or if you give full access still I think private I still would think they, it just shows us busy or something. Yeah it was, we had to play around with it a little bit because 
I wanted to know, okay, is he actually in class or is he like, this is an open time and because even open was on there. Yeah, so you have to be kind of <coughs> careful with the language because really what you have is you have one calendar application that manages multiple calendars. So here's the list of all of my calendars. Each one of these calendars has rights on its own. So I can share you know, my family calendar with my family, my home calendar with my friends, and then my work calendar just with my coworkers. So even though I see them all in one calendar application, each individual calendar has its own rights. Good. One other thing I'd like to mention about uh, iCloud is that that's an a, a public API that we push out with our SDK that people can take advantage of for British developers. So like Inkling, for example, takes advantage of the cloud that we have and syncs information between accounts that are signed up within applications. So a developer that develops a, a note-taking application can take advantage of that, and then you all would have the ability to subscribe to a note service and that anytime anybody entered in a note, a new note, let's say, it would be populated out to anybody else who was subscribed to that. So that's something that you'll start to see more and more of. It's just another way the cloud comes into play uh, in our ecosystem. If that makes sense for people. I don't know if it does or does not. It's a little confusing to start with. Think of it like sharing with Facebook, only the Apple version. Yeah, you can have a note card application, for example, if somebody creates note cards and they want to be able to share that with everybody in their class, well then everybody in their class would have to sign up for those specific, or for that specific, uh, for those specific note cards, and then anytime somebody updated within the group of population that's participating, it would automatically populate back and forth via the cloud and the internet. Any other apps, favorite apps? I have a question, app question. So, you know, what about all the office Applications? Can I can I add it and work on PowerPoints or Excel spreadsheets? I know there's an app probably for spreadsheets, but I mean, how does that work? Can can you get some information about that, or maybe people could share? So, I mean, I use Office for almost everything, so it's really vital. Yeah, I'm curious to know what other people use. Um, one service that's available is called CloudOn, and what it allows you to do. I think their app is wildly popular. I don't know if it's currently in the App Store. It got really popular, and then they pull it, and they're going to bring it back. <laughs> it allows you to take any of your Microsoft document files that you have, say, in Dropbox, or you can load your Dropbox. It's, an, it's another cloud service. So you upload your Microsoft Word files to a cloud, and then what you do is when you get on your iPad on CloudOn, it will simulate the whole Microsoft Office suite, like you're almost like you're in Microsoft Word. So if you look on your iPad, it's like, oh, I'm in Word. And you can edit the document, it'll save it the edited stuff that you did to Dropbox, which then syncs it to your computer or any other device that you wish to do it. That's one popular way to do it. And then well, what is the <coughs> app for that? It's or? called CloudOn. And it it's, might not be currently available. Oh, okay. it's not. It's not. So, but it, it would do Word, Excel, or PowerPoint? Office suite. The whole suite. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, what, what about, you know, you guys do- We you make know? pages, Keynote, we, we make applications that are basically Apple suite <coughs> for Office. And they read and write Microsoft files, no problem. There are also third party vendors like Quick Office that is basically like a Microsoft Office suite that does exactly the same thing. How much are they use? Uh, each individual pages and keynote are specific ones that we, that we make in numbers. Uh, they're $9 a piece. And Quick Office, I think, is like $15. Uh, and it does everything. Uh, there's also another one. I know that the docs to go. The docs to go, yeah. Documents to go is exactly. And it's like $15, I think, as well. Um, so again, all these apps are kind of coming together. So anyone else using a different, a different way of, of solving that problem? Um, what I do is, you can see, these are my Google Docs. So I've got like this tempo one file is actually the same file as this iPad question bank. So that's a, an Excel spreadsheet. Um, what I can do is I can just bring that up in Google and then it'll convert it to a Google format and then I can manipulate it there. On the iPad? That, on the iPad or any other device. Mm -hmm. um, you can do that with um, spreadsheets, uh, Word documents, 
or PowerPoint presentations. I'm talking about in your browser is where you're editing. Correct. You have to use your browser then to do it. So you don't get as many features by, you know, to be able to do it. Any other apps people really like? I have more of a question. Is there a good way yet to integrate um, reminders and Google Tasks? Reminders and Google Tasks. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Because there's the Apple like reminders, which is really nice because of location reminders. Um, I've been using Google Tasks since it came out, and. Um, you know, before a class, you know, 15 minutes in an hour before every appointment, you know, send you a text message, stuff like that. So I really like using Google Tasks, and I can, you know, overlay with Google Calendar with a web browser, but as far as using iMessage, or I'm not iMessage, but reminders, I wasn't sure. I looked right when my OS, iOS 5 came out, and there really wasn't anything, but I don't know if since then. Anybody's so if I'm hearing you right, what you want to do is take a task and have it send you an email when it's time to do that task. Or basically sync mess reminders and um, Google Tasks. Have you used Google Tasks for Ian before? Uh -huh. Yeah. So he wants, there's an iReminders app that Apple came out with iOS, iOS 5 that does the same thing. Okay. The two don't talk to each other. Okay. And I, I looked a couple weeks ago and I didn't see anything either. I think there's a couple of really good technical people that know how to do something. Manipulation, but there's no, I don't play well together right now. Is anyone familiar with Astrid? A S T R I D? You might look at that. I don't know if they've got an app on the iPad, um, but that's a tool that'll integrate a lot of different tasks. No one else favorite apps? Netflix? <laughs> oh, good one. Printing. Anyone doing printing from their iPad? Oh, it's called Pro Printer, Printer Pro Plus. I just kind of look on my iPad. I actually print it on my phone. It's an iOS phone. iPhone. Printer Plus. AirPrint is the tool that kind of hits the default printing apps. Um, we're not running it, as far as I know, on any of our printers today. Um, but I'm hearing more and more people asking about it, so we're, we'll figure out how to do it. Uh, is there a demand for printing from an iPad? Yeah. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Just checking. <laughs> what about Google's cloud printing? Will that work? Oh, yeah, I was going to say that. I, I, I've actually used that. So um, Google has another little tool called Cloud Print um, where you can... Uh, register from a desktop all of the printers that you use from that desktop, put them into what they call, what is it called, the cloud print? Yeah, it's Google Cloud Print. Cloud yeah. Print, um, and then you can print from a device of like an iPad. So I've printed, well actually that Excel spreadsheet that I had, I can print that from the iPad. Um, the problem that I found with that is <coughs> it's only stuff that you want to print from a browser. So it doesn't actually go in and embed them into the different applications. I just did Google search for your reminders question. There's a program called GTAS HD, and it does do that. It syncs your, supposedly, it syncs your uh, reminders to your calendar and will give you a, 
constant, you know, update um, questions. Because I've, I've used G-Tasks HD before messages sure. came out, but it didn't sync with like and let me set huh. locations. So I, I mean, oh. I could check it again. I haven't investigated it. This since. was updated on the September 22nd, so I don't know. Okay. It does have 349 reviews and it's four and a half stars. So. Right. Well, the, the thing is, is that then he's got G tasks and then he's got I reminders. It would be nice just to use one. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much switched you to I reminders. Things all people. Right. It's <laughs> yeah. I, I realize that we want Utopia, but we don't have that. <laughs> um, so sorry. It's getting better. Um, anything else printing? Other tools people are using? Uh, oh, here's the question someone asked about, or someone said something about um, using Blackboard and the portal with the iPad. Um, we, we tried to send out a big announcement today, not necessarily a big announcement, but big for us, um, that you can now use, download the Blackboard mobile app onto your iPad and use that to go into any course that you have that's in Blackboard 9.1. So we're in the process of going from an older version of Blackboard to a newer version of Blackboard. It's only the newer version that's supported at this time. When do we think that's going to be switched over by? Um, it's going to be a long process. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, I, I, my hope would be by the end of this calendar year. If we make that, I'll be thrilled. There's a lot of issues that come into that. Not, not the least of which are the technical issues. Anyone else? Anyone tried the Blackboard mobile app? It's awesome. Yeah, I should know. Is there anything that, in the meantime, can be used for a one? Can, can you can you can you access Blackboard? Anyone a? tried with this yeah. web CTA? You can. I, I've got the Dropbox. You go on um, Blackboard just like you do in the normal browser, and most classes, Pathology, it doesn't work for because the way they update their PowerPoints. But for most classes, you can just go on and download to your Dropbox, and then it'll come up as like a little PowerPoint file, or That's just like idea. you could on a computer. That's a good idea. But it only works on some classes. Some classes. Right. Some first year classes, I know it doesn't really work that well. Yeah. And it's going to be a little bit more clunky, too. Yeah. I tried to download this one two months ago, but now we're not there. Anything else? Dropbox, how many people are using Dropbox on their iPad? All right, so that's still a big tool. I use it, too. Mm -hmm. huh. What does it exactly do? Think of it as just a, almost think of it like its own hard drive that exists out uh, in the cloud. So it's, so it's like part of the cloud too? Yep. But it also pushes to all your devices. So okay. if you have a Dropbox account, you have it on your Android phone, you have it on your iPad, you have it on your Apple, you have it on your PC. When you upload something to your Dropbox, it pushes it out to all those devices. So you physically have a copy of that, whatever that is, on everything. And so it's a lot more. Any kind of data? Any kind of data. You can choose to share it with people too. If yeah. You to say like Corey see just one particular thing, you can set up a folder where he has access to that as well. And you can also, what's really nice is if you have a big attachment you can't attach to an email, you can share the link, a Dropbox link with someone and they can download oh, the nice. file. So if you have a large uh -huh. file you need to give somebody and you can't email it, uh -huh. you can just copy a public link and email that link and then they can download that file directly. So it's super easy to use. You just put a folder in my documents, and everything you put in that folder, no matter what it is, will sync automatically to all your devices. It's yeah, you need to have the desktop application installed on the computer. Mm -hmm. There's actually an app you got to run on your PC or Mac that runs in the system tray. And anytime you throw, like he says, anything you throw a file in that, it automatically puts it up to all your. So, so you, you can have it on your work and home on computer. On the iPad and or what? Yeah, you, all these devices. Is, there, is there an app for for Windows Phone for that? Yep. Too, no? Probably, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And all those um, note-taking apps you can put into your Dropbox, which can sync to your computer and your other devices. It's also. really nice. Um, connecting Google Calendar and iPad Calendar, I think we talked through that one pretty well. <coughs> Edwards to the dictionary. 
I thought the response here was pretty good. It, it gets smarter. It's still not very smart. But. Anyone else found little tools to use with dictionary type issues? No one spell checks anyway, right? <laughs> What is nice about their dictionary, though, as of late, at least with iOS 5, is that uh, apps like Goodreader and probably some of those note apps, if you're reading a PDF, and what is that word? It will mm -hmm. take the word in the PDF and define it for you. But before, it was just with iBooks, but now it'll define anything that's on a PDF. That or is a nice feature. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. But how does it work for medical apps? I mean, or medical terminology, is it very good? Oh, it's good. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be pretty good. Yeah. Is it? Do you have to load a different dictionary, or is it just standard? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's nice. It learns, too. It tries to understand what you're putting into it. So if you constantly are spelling a name a particular way and it doesn't recognize it, if you do it enough and correct it enough, it'll actually learn what you're trying to type and then remember that as being a new word that it's supposed to add to this dictionary. All right, so now we're getting into a little bit more fun. Anything else businessy that people are business business of learning, business of studying, I, business of work? I have only one question. With notability, I have to take a lot of minutes, and so I type them using that. And there's, I would like to be able to copy and paste and send it to my email, so that way I don't have to retype everything again by hand. And I don't know how to do that, so I feel like I'm doing double work. Is there a way to copy and paste? Anyone? There's yeah. a question later. What was the first part of the question? Well, I'd like to be able to. How do you cut and paste or copy and paste from an app? From Notability into my email so I can send it to myself that way. Um, from the notes, just one way you could do it from our regular note application that comes on the device, you can actually email it out. You can type a note in the notes application. Okay. And at the bottom, there's an arrow and ask you what you want to do. And you can actually email it to yourself. So then you actually have a copy of your note in your email inbox. Okay. Can, can you not just hold your finger down on it and wait for it to go into copy mode? I'm totally stupid when it comes okay. to this. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's just look at it. No, I don't you can. Mm -hmm. Notability. You can. Yeah. You just just hold your finger down on it's it, and balance. then uh, you know the little magnifying glass comes mm -hmm. up, and then take your finger off, and there'll be a little box that says select all. Just hit select all, and then copy. Okay. Then go to wherever you want to paste it. So think of it Very like simple. a long hold. Makes sense. Thank you. you. You can also save any of those notes as a PDF, and then if you have something else like the Dropbox to sync to your mm -hmm. other devices, then you can do it that way. Thank you. Tell you In most note-taking devices or applications, I mean, there's uh, there's an export function, so you can export it as a PDF or. I use good notes, I don't use notability, but if I just go back and so I can see all the documents that I have in a list, whether it's like note packets or things that I've typed out, I can just click on something and then there should be an export or sometimes it's a square with an arrow coming out of it. You click on that and then it says send it to Dropbox email, send it to iTunes, send it to this, that. And you can just click email and then it'll send it as a file rather than Copying the text and pasting it into the application. It does. Yeah. Yeah. If you have the app open, it's in the upper left, the second um, thing over. Mm -hmm. If you click on that, the first option is email. Okay. Yeah. And then that will just automatically email it. There you go. Just paid for your price of admission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone else businessy kind of things? Dragon. What about? Oh, sorry. Dragon speaks kind of nice. Oh yeah, anyone using that? I haven't used it. A little bit. What, what, what is it? Dragon speak. So it's a dictation, but you could make notes to yourself or driving in the car. Probably isn't the best thing to do, but happens. <laughs> and you could make notes, or um, if you forgot to write an email that day, you could actually write an email. Text. It's voice recognition. Email, text, word. Sorry, I don't have an iPhone. Is, is anyone using Siri on an iPad? Does it work on an iPad? Siri's only on the 4S right now. Okay. Um, who knows what's going to be on in the future? Uh, 
but it allows you to do all those things you're talking about, but just through the phone directly, not through a third party application. So you can just, you can just talk into it, say, make a reminder for me whenever I leave here to do whatever. And whenever you leave that proximity, it'll re remind you to do that. People know what Siri is? I know all the students do. It's basically a, a tool where you just talk into your phone and say, do this or do that, and it understands natural language rather than having to go through point and click. I'm finally caught with Star Trek. Star Trek has already invented everything that exists today. <laughs> games? Anyone want to know about games? Words with friends is all I need. Which one? Words with friends. Words with friends? Scrabble's <laughs> fun. Did you hear Corey ask about uh, earlier? There's an uh, algorithm. I, I don't know if it's maybe it was in within Wolfram Alpha, where if you give it the certain letters that you have, it'll come up and calculate the uh, point value of the highest word you can create. Or this app. He didn't share that with me. So. <laughs> yeah, I probably got him in trouble. I got a comment. Let me word. Next question was um, difference between iCloud and Dropbox. I think we pretty much covered that one. You had a question back here. Nope. Yep. Yeah, if this isn't out of line, I just wanted to ask uh, what's, what are the must have apps for like the third and fourth year medical students, like on rotation? Good question. Anyone using anything? Hippocrates um, is probably popular. Hippocrates would probably be the most popular one. Um, Medical dictionaries. You guys use a good medical dictionary? Harrison's. Harrison's. Um, there's, a, there's a group online. If you go into groups and do a search, it's uh, I think called Mobile Med. Um, it's an ATSU group. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a post in there that has some really a really good list. There's a website called imedicalapps.com too. Yeah, that's a good one. They have a lot of announcements in there. That's what the whole site's about. What's, what's the one Josie that Apple has? WebMD Health or something? Well, we have MacHealthcare.org, which it's not ours, but it highlights a lot of the places that are using our technology specifically. Um, UC Irvine's on there, Stanford's on there, Ohio State's on there. A wealth of good information. There's lots of good journal applications that are starting to populate out there now. To be able to get your journal articles directly onto your device. Uh, there's a doctor down in uh, Southeast Missouri, Cape Girardeau section producing some of those. They're just an iPhone format now, but he's working on iPad versions. Those apps will vary based on where you're going also. Different hospitals have ones that they like to use and stuff. And so when you get to your orientation, that's a good question for that. They can kind of clean on what's working the drone club and stuff. So we've still got a few minutes, but I see people starting to need to get out. Um, just before I lose too many people, one, is this helpful? To people, should we continue to do more of these, or it's just discussion, no agenda kind of things? Um, and then two, how do we keep this conversation going outside of this room? So I, I think there's value in having conversations where everybody is here together in one room. But a lot of times you can put a little bit more detail or add a link or something to a, a website or a, a blog or some kind of conversation. So we're trying to think through how we can extend these conversations to something that's online. So if you've got a question, like a great question, what apps should I use for years three and four? You can look at that information and get opinions from you know, 10, 20, 30 students who have already been through years three and four. Can you send a little sum up like, a, I mean, with all the apps, you know, like major topics, you know, typing, because, you know, maybe, like for me, I might not get to it for several weeks, but, you yep. know, when, when I do, I'll just, you know, I'll, I can save it, you know, send it in any format, or I'll just get the email, and so I can get back and look, okay, for this one, I can do that. We'll do I'll just that. do like a sum up, you know, for what's been discussed, just break it into major topics. and. Yeah, the good, bad, and ugly. I mean, it's going to have to be very clear. Uh -huh. We can do that. I think maybe we could just throw out the link either on the portal or on, you know, 9.1 or something and, you know, iPad apps or like mobile apps or something and 
that way, you know, it can be constantly updated or modified, but it's just where everyone goes and send them an email, say, here's the link on this, in this program. I'll do that with the mobile med because I think that's a pretty good start. It's the same kind but of I mean, I don't want to like read through pages of stuff. And you know, this is pretty concise. I want to, you know, I don't have time. I don't. I don't read blogs just because I don't have time to read through 120 pages. I don't want to be a blog. You know, I want like a concise block of information, very squeezed down. Just this for that, good. This for this, bad. This for this. And just because otherwise, I, I'm not going to look at it. You know, if it's a blog type, I just. You can use I want Google, Google Circle. If you start different yep. circles for different good particular idea. things that you have. You want to know about anatomy, then you have an anatomy circle and you can participate into that. You want to know about note taking, then you would have a note taking circle and you can participate into that. At least that way you're consolidating your information. Hey, I have a question. I have an Android phone and one of the apps I downloaded was like a, an app killer. So the apps wouldn't be running and you can have your battery. Should you do something similar with an iPad? Anyone run into problems with resource issues? I, I just read an article on this last night um, from very educated uh, technological people that said on the iPad it doesn't make a difference with those apps running down in the taskbar. That's more of like a history thing and it will recall it if you're switching back and forth. But the apps, you know, after a few seconds of being in the background aren't taking up battery, aren't taking up memory, aren't doing these things. They ran all kinds of tests on the iPad to show that you don't need to worry about sitting there and closing all of that. Uh, I haven't run into any problems with resource issues. Mike, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to say, for those that are new too, when you, when you download an app, they'll op often ask you if you want this to uh, monitor your location or wants you to push notifications, unless you really wanted to, I would say no, because that uses battery pretty quickly, because it's constantly looking at your location. Gotcha. Constantly looking to push notifications to you. So say no to that. Unless you really want. I would pay attention to that. Separate question. Um, is there a way to, if you're not connected to the internet, but you've pulled up something on your browser, and you want to pull it up later, and then later when you don't have the internet, it tries to refresh automatically, and then you've lost whatever you had saved on that screen. Like sometimes, not necessarily I don't want to print the screen, but I want to keep that whole, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, in Goodreader, for example, if you put a G in front of the web address that you're in, whenever you leave, it'll export the web page to Goodreader as a PDF, so you can read it later. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice ask. Kind of or there's another little tool I can forward out to you guys that you can convert any web page into an EPUB. You just basically it's a it's a web app that somebody created, and so you go to whatever page you wanted to go to, then you go to your bookmark bar and click on convert to EPUB, and it would dump it into iBooks. There's another app called Instapaper. A lot of people use that same kind of thing. Would it import the sub pages or just the no, just the main pages? Main page. I'm just curious what's going on with the iPad pilot study. Like I've heard rumors about it, but I don't know where that's at and if it's feasible for the people that are second years that will get in on that. We don't know yet is the the quick answer. Um, the guys who've been working on have done a great job trying to generate excitement and put together formal plans for how it would work. Um, but we're still at the point where it hasn't been formally introduced to the administration yet. There haven't been any decisions made, so I'd say it's still an investigation phase. Mm -hmm. But I think you guys are hoping by the end of the month. We're working with the administration right now to get something working, and they've been very uh, open about it and been very nice about it. So we're hoping if something works out, we can get something working for the next quarter. We are looking for people to participate that already have iPads. We're going to be sending out a survey to follow up the one that we sent in November. Uh, we'll send it out this weekend. And so just take a look for that. Um, again, we're, there's going to be some incentives to participate. If you already have an iPad, there'll be some of the things going on. But we're working with the administration now, and it's really a bit helpful. I think it's great. Anything else? Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.